From spear tips to tanks, metal has often been vital in war. And during the American Revolution, it was used for everything from cooking pots to cannonballs, which made ironworks vital strategic assets. North America was rich in iron deposits, which were mined out of the ground and then taken to ironworks to be made into weapons and utensils. But even before the outbreak of war, the British didn't want the colonies to have an independent iron industry. Pig iron had to be shipped to England to be made into finished products, which were then shipped back to the colonies. So when war broke out, the British had a stranglehold on munitions supplies. And colonial ironworks that did exist often became a focal point for conflict. Whenever the Redcoats took a Patriot ironworks, like the one in Mount Holly in New Jersey, they methodically destroyed it. But even in the forges and foundries that were safe from attack, keeping the metal flowing wasn't easy. Not many workers were prepared to take on the dirty and dangerous work in a foundry. To solve this problem, men employed at ironworks were excused from military duty. But many people falsely claimed they were foundry workers to dodge their service. So the rule had to be overturned. And being a foundry worker took real expertise. Casting cannon was a steep learning curve. Even a small fault in the metal could render the weapon inaccurate or even dangerous. And cannonballs had to be almost perfectly spherical, so manufacturing involved serious attention to detail. The struggle for control of colonial iron was, in the end, won by the Patriots. Despite all the disruption, ironworks adapted, learned new skills, and became an industry which made a strong contribution to the rebel victory.